Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Cañas. And today I have with me Kate Dixon, uh, who is a uh, certified coach and uh, the author of Pay Up, and, and basically specializes in helping women negotiate. Mm -hmm. Kate, thank you for, for joining me today. Uh, you, you recently spoke uh, in the Women in Insurance Leadership Conference in San Diego, and mm -hmm. I wasn't there, but I, I heard that it was fantastic. Awesome. Uh, so I immediately knew I had to reach out and invite you on the, on the podcast to help you get the message out uh, b because um, I, I do a lot of career advice uh, for, uh, through chatwithtony.com. Uh, I do about 400 of those conversations a year, wow. but I'm not a coach and I'm not an expert. Uh, mm -hmm. And the one, one thing that I've noticed over and over and over is no, no, that women often are asking me, should I apply for this job? Because I don't have this one of the 10 requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, and men never ask me that. No. Uh, and also, uh, I have to really push them to negotiate. They never want to, ne to negotiate, it's, uh, right? While, while the men always negotiate. Yeah. Uh, so so you're, you're doing, like, this is such important work. Uh, so so uh, I'd love to hear about the book. I'd, lo I'd love to hear about, about what you do and, and why you do it. Yeah, well, um, so you know, I'm really appreciative of, of the opportunity to chat with your listeners today. And um, you know, I have a, a ton of passion around this, this topic about salary negotiation and, and, you know, career management and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and my, my background is in corporate compensation. So I've spent most of my career managing pay and, and creating offers um, in companies like Nike and American Express and Intel, a bunch of other companies. Um, I now have my own um, coaching and consulting practice that I've had for about four and a half years. Um, and I, I help people get more of what they want, basically. And, and salary negotiation is a big deal because virtually nobody gets to be an expert at it because you don't do it very often. And as you said, women um, don't do it as often as men. In fact, um, you know, surveys show that women negotiate sometimes, you know, like around 30% of the time, um, as opposed to men who, you know, as you said, almost always do it, you know, more like the 80, 85% range. But we know that um, people who negotiate usually get something and, you know, they may not get exactly what they want, but um, over 80% of the time, there's a job fight survey that was done a couple of years ago, and, and over 80% of the time that people negotiate, they get something for it. So it's almost always a good idea, unless they come up to you and say, oh, no, this is our final offer. This is our best offer. We're not negotiating. That's really an invitation to negotiate if they haven't said that to you. Awesome. Uh... I love the fact that you actually come from a corporate compensation background, mm -hmm. uh, right? Because you're right. Nobody gets good at this, right? It, it, it's, it's the, the, uh, the, the, the Christmas day principle. We only do it once a year. We never right. get good at it. Right. And in case of yeah. negotiation, you probably do it less than once a year when it's, when it's your salary. Uh, and so, 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 so my experience with it has been from being a nerd and reading a lot mm -hmm. and, and from doing a lot of career advice, but, but I, I, it, it's never been my my day job, right? Yeah. Uh, so so coming from you, uh, uh, the stats are are, are super uh, in, in, important. Yeah. Uh, well, and I find that the background too. You know, I've been on the inside, so I I kind of know what's going on. And <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, my clients will often you know catastrophize and make up things it's like, oh gosh, I haven't heard from them, and that must mean. That they're hiring someone else out from under me you know it's like no that's not actually what's going on you know let me tell you what's probably going on and and that that can really kind of lower the stress level and people feel a lot more comfortable if they know what you know what's happening and you know oh there are tons of people out there that are saying that say you know negotiate like your life depends on it and you win and they lose and you know, frankly, 
my clients, I, I don't advise my clients to, um, or anybody to use that approach because it's not a cage match. Well, uh, and, and, and that, that's a problem based on what I've read about negotiation. It, it's not a good approach, even when you're buying a car, but yeah. you're not buying a car here, right? Yeah. Uh, like if we can come to an agreement, I want to go work for you. So, yeah. so we want to start on the right foot. Right. And, uh, and, you, you know, you're really showing them what it's like to work for you, work with you, right? And, and if you do a, a really, you know, weird job and start off on the wrong foot, you know, you still have to, I mean, it's like with a car, you have that one transaction and you're done. But at your employer, you have that one transaction, and that's the first transaction that you have that starts your career. And, um, and let me tell you, HR people have long memories. So, <laughs> so what, one common fear that mm -hmm. I hear is, uh, I, it, especially in insurance, which is the fund that I play in, um, job searches are very painful. We're, we're, we're very slow at hiring. We're very bad at hiring, even though we're desperate for talent. So I finally got an offer. I don't want to lose it. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in our world of insurance with how hot the client market is, I tell them there's no way you lose the offer because of reasonable negotiation, because of asking for 10% and doing it in a proper way. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in general, are, are, how often do people lose an offer because they negotiate it? So um, I've been at this for a very, very long time. And in my time inside organizations, I have literally never seen an offer pulled um, for negotiation. Now I have seen an offer pulled if somebody lies um, on their application um, or they don't pass a background check. Um, but even, you know, that's pretty rare, but, um, but those are the reasons that typically people get an offer pulled. I have heard, you know, and I, I say this when I do my speaking engagements all the time, that it, it, you don't get your offer pulled for negotiation. And I have had a couple of people tell me that they, you know, that they have heard of somebody who's had that happen to them. But, you know, without a fuller picture of what actually went on, it's hard to know. But, but I think, you know, you make a good point. If you're negotiating in good faith and, and um, being a collaborative partner when you're doing your negotiation um, and not treating it like the Hunger Games, um, chances are like, negligible that, that you'll have the um, offer pulled because, you know, when, once you get an offer from a company, they're telling you, hey, we want you to come work for us. And we spend a lot of time thinking about this and we really care. Um, so that they, you know, there's a, a desire for this to work out. And, and, you know, if you can keep that in mind um, that you're both working toward a solution, a business solution that will work for both parties, that's really the great mindset to get in. And it gives you a little bit of emotional distance too, which is important when you're negotiating because this stuff feels really personal and really emotional. But the bottom line is it's not personal. It's, it's really not personal. personal. And, and when they make an offer and you think it's too low, it's not because they don't value you as a person. It's just that they may not have the same view of how valuable that job is um, to them as you do when you when you know all the stuff that goes into it. And you know, sometimes it's not going to work out, right? If you have a really different view of the value of that work than the company that you're negotiating with, you may not be able to come to an agreement, and that's okay. Um, don't, you know, don't beat yourself up about it, especially in this marketplace. Um, but, you know, if you can come to an agreement that works for you and works for the company, that's great. And I honestly think, you know, people are like, oh, you're on the other side. Now, do companies hate you for teaching people how to negotiate? And I, I don't, I don't think so, because I really think it's the, in the best interest of the company you know, when the, when the employee goes in and, and does a good job of negotiating, says what it is that, that, that's important to them, negotiates in good faith, has a good experience there, um, then they're coming into the role feeling confident that they know the package, 
They understand what they're getting into. They've done their best work in terms of trying to get um, a, a package that works for them. That is great for the employer, for them to come in with that sense of confidence and purpose. Um, so I, I think, honestly, um, it's a good thing when, um, when potential employees negotiate. Okay. Um, wh what about, so my experience uh, uh, has been that, that once you are at a company, especially if it's a large company, Mm -hmm. you regardless of regardless of performance your chances of a significant salary increase in seat without a promotion without changing department mm -hmm. are negligible you you really have to 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 get get paid properly up front mm -hmm. is that generally accurate or it, it can be, it really okay. depends on the company, but, but it is, I feel like it is a, a ton easier to negotiate on the front end than it is to, uh, you know, on the back end when you're already at the company. Um, but, and in fact, having great conversations with your manager about your pay and your career, that's my next book that I'll be publishing this fall. Awesome. Um, but, but I really think that it's important to really know the market for the work that you do. And so, you know, if you find that you're in a role internally and you start, you know, talking to people who do the same kind of role at other companies or you, you look at, um, you know, survey data from salary.com and you find that you're getting paid significantly below the external market, that's a great place to negotiate from, you know, talk to your boss and make sure that you talk to them ahead of time that you want to have this conversation. Hey, I'd love to have a conversation about um, my pay, my career. Um, let's make a, a meeting specifically for that. And then you, you can show them or not necessarily show them, but to, you can tell them, hey, my research is showing that jobs like this are getting paid between X and Y in the marketplace. Um, and I'm getting paid Z, which is below, um, how, how can we get me closer to the market range, right? Or I mean, what needs to happen for me to move into that? Um, and, you know, sometimes it's say stuff like, oh, we don't have any budget. We're going to take, get, take care of you next time. I mean, that is like the most common thing that people say. Um, and sometimes you do have to wait. Sometimes they don't have that capability. Ability. But um, but I think employers are getting more responsive now in, in this moment where um, employers don't have as much to say <laughs> as employees. I mean, employees have more agency now. It's awesome. Um, and I think if you handle it with respect. Um, oh, and my biggest tip on, in, you know, internal negotiations is never use the word fair, because even though it might be objectively true that you're not getting paid fairly. Um, it tends to be a trigger word for managers. And, and what managers sometimes will think when you say, hey, my pay is not fair, um, is they think, well, you're accusing me, uh, the manager, of not acting in integrity, right? And, and you need your manager to advocate for you. So even though, you know, again, it may be true that it's not fair, just don't use that word. So you can say, hey, jobs like this are paid between X and Y in the marketplace. You know, based on my performance, I really think that I should be at the, at the higher end of that. How close can we get? And then just be quiet, allow them to ramble a bit um, and see what can happen. And you, you will probably not get an answer right there, but it's worth asking. And, and the, the timing for, 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 for doing that so every company has the, their year, yearly review, but budgets are set before then, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so is it two months before your review, three months before your review? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, and, it's a great question. Um, I love to recommend that you look kind of at mid-year, right? If, you, if your company does things once- so You're definitely ahead of budget at that point. Well, 
it can oftentimes be easier to get what we refer to in compensation as, as an off cycle increase than it is to get your merit increase kind of supersized, if you will. Because what happens, and, and a lot of times people will say, well, I'm just going to wait and have the conversation when I get my raise and tell them that I want more. Um, and the problem with that is, you know, again, with the annual increase budgets and all of that kind of stuff, you know, in or before you get your, you know, paycheck increase, it's the increase has been, you know, looked at by layers and layers of management, sometimes in many cases, all the way up to the CEO. Now, will the CEO be looking at your time, you know, your little job? And probably not, but they're going to look at an aggregate budget and say, okay, it's okay for the company to spend X and such, you know, millions of dollars, whatever. And so it's really hard um, just mechanically to get your uh, annual increase changed. Um, it's just, it's really hard. And there's, you know, the budget constraints and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, I like to recommend doing things at mid-year because sometimes um, there could be a little bit more flex um, and, you know, maybe a little bit before mid-year, maybe a month. Uh, before, but you know, right after you get an increase, it's a little hard to go. Oh, you know, thank you for my increase. I would like to have another one. You know, <laughs> so hey, so so roughly five months after your last review might be about the the right time. Yeah. to your odds are better. Of, <laughs> I feel of, they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, that 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 is fantastic. I had no idea on that, and, and it it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely makes a lot of sense. So 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 tell us a, 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 about the book. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the book meant to do? How, 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 how does it do it? So um, the, the book is called Pay Up, uh, um, Unlocking Insider Secrets of Salary Negotiation. And so what, what I do in the book is make sure that you understand all of the elements of your package, right? And, you know, because a lot of people, they know that they're, they get equity, but they don't understand the difference between stock options and restricted shares and things like that. So I, I kind of, you know, tell people what those things are, the difference between incentives and commissions and all of that kind of jazz. So that's part of the stuff that I do up front. Um, I help people understand where to look for salary information so that, you know, market research stuff. And then I walk folks through kind of the um, analyzing what's important to you, kind of figuring out how to walk through that salary negotiation conversation. There are scripts in there, all kinds of stuff. So, um, so it's really kind of a soup to nuts um, version of how to negotiate your salary. And it's, it's pretty comprehensive. So, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't assume that I know anything about negotiation or about yeah. compensation. Yes. Uh, and helps and, and, and points me to the resources and how to, how to use them. Yeah. And, and the way that I walk through it is, um, is kind of this tool set, skill set, and mindset. So the tool set, these are the tools that you need in order to get the information to do your best work. The skill set is really around, you know, how do you say things? What do you say? What do you not say? Um, and then the mindset is, you know, get out of your own head and get out of your own way. So you know, one of the things that I recommend that people do before they have their negotiation conversation is sit in a quiet place and either meditate or just be completely still and quiet for five to say 15 minutes before they get on, on the phone. Um, and I think that that can make a huge difference because sometimes we get so worked up because it's really emotional um, that you know, we get into our own way and we stumble over our words and all this kind of stuff. And it's important to practice, you know, practice what you want to say. It's okay. And it's okay to have notes with you um, to help remind you of all the things that you want to want to cover. So, yeah, I mean, it's, again, you know, remember that the organization has all the information about the job and about how everybody is paid in this job code and, and all of that kind of stuff. And you don't have any of it, but they don't know what's in your head. So you're, you know, you're really trying to help them understand what it is that you're passionate about, what you care about, um, what's important to you. 
um, and to understand as much as you can of, of what's going on inside. But, you know, bottom line, um, you need to self-advocate because nobody's going to do that for you. I mean, I think one of the things that women and people of color are socialized to do is, you know, it's like, oh, you should be grateful just to have a job offer. And, you know, that attitude doesn't allow you to self-advocate and you really need to do that in this work. Um, and, uh, and, you know, again, if you do it in a um, collaborative way, it's likely gonna give you some good results. And one of the most important results that it's going to give you, even if you don't get an increase in your you know, base pay or your bonus or whatever, it's gonna give you some confidence in knowing that you've kind of pushed and you know, pushed around the edges to make sure that you are getting the best package you can possibly get. And, and that's important. And, and they need to know, the employer needs to know that you'll stick up for yourself. I, I've, I've got to say for the listeners, since, since uh, they're in insurance, uh, it's 2022. Uh, the insurance hiring market, uh, insurance on unemployment went uh, from several years of being between 1% and 2%. Uh, during COVID, increased to about 4.5%, still a lot lower than, than the national average. And very quickly came right back, and nowadays it's it's right around around that one percent. In fact, we had a, like, a, like a 0.8 a month ago. Uh, wow. So so it's very very low uh, unemployment. Uh, retirements increased in the overall economy, and and our industry, uh, boom, baby boomers were overrepresented in our industry. So those retirements hit us even harder. Mm -hmm. uh, also in our industry, just about every job almost can be done remotely. So mm -hmm. the world's your oyster. Basically, uh, for the listeners, uh, insurance talent is in very, very high demand right now. Uh, it'll likely be for a long time, but but definitely right now it is. So uh, they're lucky to have you. <laughs> uh, now, job searching in our industry is painful, so it, it takes a long time. Uh, but but uh, but yes, negotiate hard. They're, they're lucky to to have you, uh, and they desperately need experienced insurance people to 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 cover uh the, their, their talent needs uh, uh so 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 kate um tell me about, about your coaching services so let, let's start with on the on the, the individual side is is it a normal career coaching type of thing or is it very much focused on negotiating your salary kind of the short-term piece around it, job searching it's focused on the salary negotiation um events, right? So, so typically um, clients will come to me when they're expecting an offer, when they, you know, know that something's coming or when they just receive it. Because, you know, I don't know what the practice is um, in the insurance business as much as I do on, you know, tech and, and um, sportswear and some of the other organizations that I work with a lot. But, um, but with, with technology, the turnaround time for those conversations is really fast, typically. Um, and, you know, so so once you know that you're, you've got an offer and you don't really know what you want to do with it, um, you know, a potential client would call me, we'd talk about what I do, and then and we'd, we'd get it done. Um, but, you know, not everybody wants to meet one-on-one -on -one and do that whole thing. Um, you know, my book has tons of great information on it. Um, I have an online class that you can go through self-paced and it, you know, runs you through all of the, you know, scripts and, you know, how to handle different pieces of it and stuff. Um, and, you know, I also have free content on my blog that will kind of tell you about some of the things that you can do as well. So, um, my website is Kate Dixon, K A T E D I X O N dot org, O R G. Um, and head over there and you can see all kinds of stuff. And, um, and you know, if you have any questions, there's contact form on there and I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. So, so it's, it's not a two month commitment to eight yeah. sessions kind of thing. Okay. And well, uh, yeah, what we do there, you know, the packages are designed to, mm. you know, people a certain amount of time with me. And, you know, when I, when I work with executives, you know, we tend to have like a, a three month engagement that, 
you know, or up to three months. I mean, sometimes like I had a guy that was an executive and we had a really intense, like talked every day and, and he wound up working through this in, in a couple of weeks. But, you know, typically with an executive package, you know, we're, he's doing it or she's doing a, um, a salary negotiation. Um, they're going to be doing a, 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 a relocation kind of thing. They're doing um, employment agreements and all that kind of stuff. And those tend to be kind of three different chunks of work. But, you know, earlier career folks, um, you know, we may only need three sessions to kind of like talk about strategy, then they do the work and then we debrief it and then talk about what's next. And then they go and, um, you know, do another conversation with the employer, which is pretty typical. Um, so, you know, it depends on what, what uh, the person needs. So. And I, I love how transparent the, uh, the prices are actually listed on, on the website. Yep. Uh, so, so no surprises. That was fantastic. By, by the way, uh, for uh, are my majors about to graduate? She's got a fantastically priced package for recent grads, less yeah. than five hundred bucks. Uh, that that one's a no brainer if you're <laughs> graduating from a risk management program, and and because generally they graduate with multiple offers. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. And it's that, hard negotiate you know it's like what do I you know what do I pick and how do I know which one's the best offer and um you know I taught I do a lot of work with um you know MBA you know recent MBA grads and and undergrads as well and you know it it's hard to know it's it's hard to know what's what and and you know if you're going into a training program there's not a ton of room to negotiate there but there can be room to negotiate um a sign-on bonus, which can be really helpful. Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of different things. So F Fantastic. And I won't, I won't spend too much time on, on the other side of the coaching, the organizational side, mm -hmm. uh, since we've been chatting mostly about the personal side, I'm guessing that, that the leaders, um, I'm guessing the people that have listened this late in are, are more the talent than the leaders, but, uh, but uh, it looks like, like, like you can also help organizations uh, on how to design the organization and how to design compensation, basically anything yep. around leadership and compensation. Yep. And yeah, I, I do consulting with um, organizations. I just got my, my company just got um, B Corp certified. So I'm working Fantastic. With, um, with a lot of B Corps lately. Um, but yeah, I, I work with, uh, you know, I, I've got a client now that has 12 employees and then um one that has 70,000 employees. So, um, you know, the, the th fun is in um, being able to look at a lot of different things. And I love being able to do compensation consulting and, um, you know, salary negotiation coaching because both of them inform the other. You know, I was talking with one of my um, uh, uh, compensation consulting clients and kind of giving them some insights from things that I had heard from um, candidates, you know, that are clearly not going to that company, but, but getting some of the, you know, taking the temperature of what's going on um, from a talent perspective in the marketplace can, can really help inform, you know, that, and then vice versa, you know, I can help um, individuals understand really what's going on in companies as well. So. Yeah. The, doing both. I, I, I agree. Uh, I, I, uh... My my, my uh, chat with Tony, uh, which which is a, which is a what I call micro mentoring free for insurance professionals, uh, very biased career advice for for insurance professionals basically, uh, very much informs my my uh, my day job wh where I uh, provide staffing services to insurance companies it's because yeah I hear it from from the horse's mouth every day yeah. exactly what what oh, nice. what kind of offers they're seeing and and and. and and uh, what different companies are looking for, and what and what the application experience is like with different companies. Uh, yeah. So 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 yeah, co com completely agree. Uh, awesome. Uh, thank you very much for for your, for your time. Uh, uh, the 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 book and the upcoming second book both sound yeah. really really interesting. This is deeply deeply necessary. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah th thank you so much for for for, for your time. It, it's it's been wonderful. My pleasure. Uh.
Yeah, and, and hopefully folks will come away with some tips that they can apply the next time they negotiate. And don't forget to negotiate. Um, chances of you getting something in return for that, that hard work um, are pretty good. So I've got, I've got confidence that you'll be able to do it. The very worst thing you'll get is uh, they say no. Yeah. Uh, and, and if handled properly, the, like you, you, you still gain some respect from them. Yes. Uh, they just didn't have the budget. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and, and you know, that you didn't, that, that you didn't leave, you know, 5% or 10% on, on the table just because they were expecting you to negotiate. Like, I, I loved, I think my favorite part was where you explained, I didn't know this, uh, or at least I didn't have it in these words that, that if, if they don't tell you that, that this is mm -hmm. an absolutely final offer, right? This, this, is, this is what the training program pays, right? Yeah. If they don't tell you that, they're really expecting you, they're really inviting you to negotiate. Yeah, well, and even if they do tell you this is what the training program pays, that may mean that the base pay is not negotiable, but maybe the start date's negotiable. Maybe the location is negotiable. Maybe um, there is a sign-on bonus that you could get. So there's there's other things that you can think of in this um, too. So, um, you know, why not put yourself out there and try it? And even if it doesn't come to pay off in this particular one, it'll probably pay off later down the road and get used to doing this because you need to step into the confidence um, that comes from doing this work. And trust me when I say the confidence doesn't come before you do the work, the confidence comes from doing the work itself. So you'll get more confident about salary negotiations after you've been successful at it. So I really want you to be confident. So go out there and get it. Awesome. Uh, th thank you so much for, for, for your time. My pleasure.